Ooh, there it's preparing to live stream the meeting. Ooh. It's almost like AI. Yeah. Setting up your meeting. Done. Whoa, where it go? Hi, Lane. How are you, sir? Fantastic. Yourself, Walt. I'm okay. Hey, I was I was talking with somebody who wasn't from this country about humor. And he, he said that he thought English humor and British humor, I'm uh, sorry, English humor, Canadian humor and British humor were kind of similar. Similar? Similar, yeah. Yeah. The same. It's probably because we own you. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably okay, it. I, a lot of I, I got that because I'm Canadian. But what about American humor, Lane? What's well, there's there's a difference there, isn't there, with American humor versus British? It was. It was. Mm. I think Python broke a lot of that though. Um British British humor lends a lot from the continent, so a lot of it's very surreal. Um like the goons are the first sort of surreal bunch. Um, but then I think the Python, like American comedy is always, for me, right? it's always been more like interactive and uh, nods and winks and more observational. Um, so kind of like the French? No, theirs is like a mixture of Pratt Falls and Entendre and stuff like that. It's Just different. like America. Yeah, but no, but theirs is all interactive, like I say. It's very, it's difficult. It's it like, is. it's like rock and roll, Walter. It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. No, no, the English stole rock and roll. Well, Remember? no, we made it better. I think you'll find we made it better. No, you made it whiter. We made it better. <laughs> we made it blacker. <laughs> That's right. We made rock and roll a lot blacker, dude. The black music scene would not have taken hold in America. I did not come to Britain first in Europe. And you, you guys asked. sanitized it and sent it back overseas. No, right? we, no, no, no. Right. Okay. No, we embraced it, baby. There were stars here. The black All artists right. couldn't fill a bar in America half. Okay. Well, let's start the, the show. War, by the way. Let's start the show. Has it not started? Hi. Hi, Martha. Hi. How are you guys? Fine, thanks. How are you? Good. I'm, uh, I think so. I think I'm good. Uh, we still got fires up here, but we got some rain. So In we're Nova better. Nova Scotia, eh? Halifax. Well, you know, we were talking about uh, uh, provinces to the right of Canada, and I think we mentioned Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, which both are on fire. Mm -hmm. So we must not mention the province of Ontario today, okay? okay. Do not mention Ontario. We could, we could screw everything up. Okay. Just saying. Are you still having your fires over where you are? Yes, we are, but we've uh, thankfully had some uh, some rain, and uh, which is very good. That works well for us. Yeah, we're having thunder showers right now. Are oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. This, uh, oh, stop it with the mocking lane. That's, <laughs> that's another part of your, your British humor that I just don't get. I don't get that. And all of the guys dressing up in dresses. And, and what's that about? You don't get guys dressed up in dresses. I don't know, Jim. Okay, I get them, but I don't, you know, I picked them up. On the you streets. Are them. That's the big difference between uh, Canadian and, and uh, British humor is there's not uh, as many uh, guys dressing up uh, and playing women's roles in SCTV as there was Monty Python. I refer you, I refer you to the Lumberjack song. That's true. But, okay. you know, in, in, in a rain, do you guys put on a moose hat? Because I could see that being dangerous uh, during hunting season. I put on the human skin of uh, our next door neighbors. We put chocolate boost on our heads. Mm. Surrealist humor again. Easy. It's just, it's I like still, that reference best. It's pretty good. <laughs> well, I have I have a video for you guys if you want to see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is it safe? Is it, 
Is it inappropriate? Oh, yeah, totally. Good. And uh, just let me set it up here. And... Brought to you by Milano's. <laughs> that distinctive cookie taste melts in your mouth. Milano's. Have, there been, have there ever been anywhere near Milan? No. Milan? No. 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 Oh. <laughs> you see, you don't have that in Britain. You don't have that kind of humor in Britain. This is true. Or the or the UK or whatever you call it. What is it now? The Empire? The Broken Empire? Uh, a, a cast aside leaf. That's what we are. Drifted on the water. Okay, I, I'm I'm gonna play the video now. Okay. Good. Oh time, Walter. I hope to. Oh, there we Ooh, go. Great boxes. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Look at all the lovely smiles. All the lovely shiny teeth. Oh, he's our. <laughs> Get our son. Now he, he points back to that black sandbag to the left. It's not a sandbag. Well, wow. and, and, he, and he said, That's no way to talk about Jill. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And he said, The sandbag right, right, ran right out in front of me. It's not a sandbag, is it? Thank you for joining us today. Ladies I thought it was a monitor, the like the audio monitor. Anyway, fell on what stage? He's at the Air Force Academy. He actually fell down. Well, I hope he wasn't hurt. I hope he wasn't hurt, but it's the whole thing is look, the whole thing is crazy. You got to be careful about that. You got to be careful about that because you don't you don't want that. I thought it was touching that uh, Donald, uh, he was, uh, you know, he had some concerns, right? Yeah. Didn't he almost go fucking and under his breath as well? Uh, did he almost say the F word? I couldn't tell you, but uh, Donald Trump has problems going down down ramps for from airplanes. He tipped tippy toes down. That's what it is. So what what do you think? Uh, what do you think of uh, President Joe or Joseph Joseph R. Biden? Oh, um, I think he's terrible. He's might as it, well have elected reelected Trump. You know. Well, wait, <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. It's terrible. I mean, the the debt ceiling agreement is a complete betrayal, and well, not not to Joe Biden's values, but it is a complete betrayal. And the Democrats are so stupid that they didn't try to force him to give up any concessions uh, for uh, so called negotiating with McCarthy. He's a right. terrible negotiator. Or he's just a Republican. It doesn't matter. Both uh, yield the same results. He's well, isn't it a win-win? It ticked off the Republicans and the Democrats, so it's a win, right? I guess so. Yes. <laughs> you know, You're, both parties yeah. are ticked off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, sh he should have. He should just switch parties before it's too late. Who, Donald? Joe Biden. <laughs> oh, Joe yeah. Biden. Well, yeah. Donald used to be a Democrat. Yeah, right. Yeah, just like Reagan. <laughs> well, Reagan. <that's>, okay. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's look at a couple of your your presidential candidates. Uh, can you see that in the, in the picture there, Jim? Oh, yeah. 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 So we we have Joe. Is that a is that a yes or a no or I don't know. No. No. Okay. I will yeah. never vote for a I will never vote for anyone who is not completely on board with Medicare for all. Oh, oh Jimmy got well, smiley yeah, eyes. He does, yes. Got smiley eyes. Well, and then you've got uh Robert Kennedy, uh Martha. No. He's for uh, healthcare, isn't he? No. He he's an anti vaxxer. Yeah, that's Dangerous. not that's not being for healthcare he's, oh, he's a quack you guys, you guys are yeah. so picky so okay a, okay yeah he's a dangerous moron well we got marianne 
Uh, she's another one uh, that I like, except for her stance on vaccines and mandates and masking and all that. She kind of cowardly backtracked on her her uh, vaccine COVID idiocy, and uh, you know she should be at least she'd be honest with uh, what she said in the past about vaccines. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, on the Republican side, so you only got three guys running for the Democrats right now. That's that's so kind of wrong. That's wrong, though, right? Yeah, so right. far. Where's right. Hillary? I mean, where's Chelsea? Uh, mm. Mrs. Oprah. Obama. Yeah. <laughs> Oprah. Yeah. You, yeah, you have right. so many to choose from. Martha Stewart. Keir Starmer. <laughs> I mean, he could do that too, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, Please on the Republican on the Republican side, we have Larry Elder, who I know nothing about. Do you? No. He's a Republican apologist. Okay. So, uh, what good is he? He apologizes for the Republicans. Good. I mean, yes. you need that. <laughs> he's he's kind of like, I, I want to join the club that doesn't, that, that hates me. But wants me as a token, and I'm going to use that word. Yes, token. As a Canadian, I admire a man who will say he, he's sorry. So, what do you Is say he was sorry California? for? Pardon me, Lane. Is he from California? I think so. Yes, Isn't actually, I think he tried to take the governor to court or something. Yeah. Again, uh, I mean, there's like. Last week, I mentioned I'm not very good with American politics, but then I got thinking, I think there's some Americans who are not good with American politics. The entire country. <laughs> okay. All right, we got Nikki. Ah, come on now. I mean, she's a wannabe uh, Tulsi Gott Gabbard, isn't she? Uh, right? She, uh, she needs a little white in her hair right, right about there. And I, uh, I'm sensing a pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> all republicans okay they all, all right, suck yeah. <laughs> everybody sucks asa hutchinson give me what do you know about this fellow i know nothing he look. he looks mm. like a, a racist uh dangerous yeah well, i know nothing about him he doesn't look good it's well that's that's you know that's that's kind of mean uh jim he, former he arc Arkansas governor. Okay. All right. All right. So, a bit of it. Yes. All right. Well, let's let's go to the guy who might win it all. Tim Scott. <laughs> uh, we got uh, any votes here yet? No. 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 All right. Well, you know what you need Pass. is you need you need the truth. Oh Jesus Christ. Uh. That, he he is even he's t even to the right of uh, J uh, RFK Jr. On is he to the right of Asa Hutchinson? That's what mm -hmm. I want to know. I think so. This guy is a true reactionary, scary nutcase. All right. Um, okay. W what about this fellow here? He's pretty reasonable, you know. <laughs> I think we ought to give him another chance. <laughs> he's got experience now. I like the flag behind him. That's kind of novel. <laughs> and the hair the hair's looking good it is it's not mm -hmm. moose but it, it'll do okay and then we have oh <sighs> meatball meatball he's a big uh, spicy meatball <laughs> this guy meatball ron ron DeSantis. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's, hold on. He's... Here. Hold. Hold on. Don't make up your mind yet. Well, maybe. Maybe do. More like wrong, DeSantis. Wrong. wrong. With a G. Wrong. Wrong. Yeah. British comedy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. So you got him or him? Oh, I think you're missing someone. Well, the governor of New Jersey hasn't mm. put, put his name in yet. Oh, okay. As of today. You know, I could be wrong. But, uh, yeah, would he... Uh, 
Okay, this guy, this guy, or the governor in New Jersey? None of the above. I would, I would I broil, broil the first one. I would uh, skewer the second one and bake the third one. And who would eat them? Who would you well, feed by, them to? By there are a lot of feral hogs that are, uh, you know, terrorizing a lot of towns in in this country. I don't know if you've read the stories, but there are feral hogs in the South in Texas and. Hey, in Alberta, in Shouldn't Alberta, we've got a wild hog problem too. That's right. So, as a vegetarian, can you still kill them? Uh, we'd have to, like I said, we'd have to throw them to the hogs to satiate them, to give them a sacrifice. Give them. It's like throwing something into the volcano to stop the earthquakes. Well, that's quite the segue because they're looking at using pork fat to power. Airplanes now. Hogs are people too. Right. Pork fat. Did you? Did it, I didn't read up on the on the subject. I just remember the headline. So <laughs> go to Drudge and you'll find it. The Drudge Report, people. No? <laughs> how, how would that work exactly? You would open your computer, uh, uh, put Drudge into Google. <laughs> <laughs> No, you numbskull. Sorry. How would you possibly power an airline with pork fat? You could kerosene lamps for sure, right? So it's definitely flammable. Yeah. Packs Maybe full of it's what you, quit feeding them corn. It's that ethanol, baby. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it's possible. I think that's just a fake story. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at, face. look at, Eastern British humor. Uh, at least then you'll finally get pigs that fly. <laughs> See, that's, okay, that's, that's more common wise territory right there. That hey! Is, the that is just, that's just bad on so many levels. Yeah. All right. It, so any anything new with you guys? That was my, uh, that's all the, all the stuff I have. I have some questions, but. What about you guys? How are you guys doing? Sweetheart? Oh, well, I guess we're doing okay, right? Mm. We're getting our garden ready. We planted a lot of things in our vegetable garden this week. Um, what do we have out there? We have artichokes, broccoli, tomatoes. Um, what else do we have, dear? I planted a lot of my resentment. A lot of Cilantro. My, my bitterness. Parsley. Basil, aren't you aren't you late? Aren't you late? Isn't it the May uh long weekend, which for us is the Queen Victoria's uh birthday? But um, uh, well we just had a frost not too long no, ago. Really? And I guess yeah, there's a we're not supposed to well, according to the farmers, old farmers almanac, I think we're not supposed to plant anything until the first full moon in May, which was a couple of weeks ago okay. um but uh yeah it, it looks like it's going to be coming along nicely well, you forget you forget wally wow we're north of you oh we're sorry. near we're near the we're, we're near the uh arctic circle yes the great white north <sighs> that's, we're a farther republic, north. that's a republican paradise mm -hmm. oh yeah uh, tucker carlson has a place up here we just learned recently Get Not too far. He's got a cabin. So, um, is I, what's the news on Tucker? Do you know? Is he off? Uh, is he, he's not doing nothing now? Is he contract says he can't do anything? Or uh, I oh. no, he's. I think he paid a lot of money to get out of that that non compete uh, clause or whatever. And he's uh, isn't he about to start his own Rumble show? Has that even started? I I would like to see him on Truth Social myself, but or Twitter. I thought he was teaming up with Elon Musk to <laughs> have a show on Twitter. Well, I thought so that was Ron DeSantis who was going with uh, Elon Musk. God, is everybody going with this guy? What a slut! <laughs> that's that's what happened. That's what happened. Well, Donald Trump. That's what, electric, that's what electric cars do to you. 
your, your sex drive. It does it uh, does something to your scrotum. Seems <laughs> electrical curtain. Oh, sorry. Uh, British joke. Uh, because it's like sex, because you can't hear an electric car coming. Oh man, that's a good. That's you know what? That is better than more coming right wise. That goes <laughs> more, uh, coming wise. more coming wise. <laughs> yes, yes. That's uh, Benny Hill. That's kind of oh, Benny yeah. Hillish, but oh, it's okay. an intellectual Benny Hill. Yeah. Are you a big fan of Benny Hill? You guys over no. there? My dad was. <laughs> no. America really embraced Benny Hill more than Britain did. Yeah. Oh, it was a slapstick, though, right? So. It was slap head, actually. Right. You With know, an the, accent. The thing about British, uh, I, I watch a lot of British crime dramas, and um, their punks that they arrest have a better vocabulary than the guys I work with. You know, it's just must yeah. be fantastic writing. Speaking of which, do you guys know anything about the writer strike? Is it still going or is it done? Or Oh, yeah, it's still going. And the producers and the companies are still pretending they don't know how they make money. They don't know how to make money off of uh, of new technology. It's the same old story. Right. Streaming, streaming services. Um, I think we have some ASMR. Uh, we should bring in um, DPA. If you could just, uh, how's that for a segue? There he is. You ever see a, what do we got? Ooh. All right, I don't see you. Hear me over the machine tonight. How's the sound? Sounds a little, little muttered. Um, <laughs> All right. I got the machines running. Something oh, seems okay. to be Machines running. Ah. What are you running on the machine, Dave? I'm playing Pennsylvania Cherry. Ooh. Oh, You're... that's the, it's, keep it clean, will you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm always sporting wood. So, so what are you doing? Yeah. You're planing wood, are you? I'm planing wood. Yes, I'm laying it down. Not laying pipe, um, I'm planing wood. Yeah, so you get to watch uh, sort of dull, semi industrial monotony. And if I can, spoke kind of way. Can we eat this at the end or? My wood? No. <laughs> Let me think about it. No, we had uh, we had two, uh, two shows with uh, up, Joe from Norway, and now we have DPA um, lathing, or lathing, planing stuff. Yeah, this is a joiner. This takes a rough face of the board that's come off of a saw, and it's all it's not flat. And okay. Plane it all clean, usually in one pass. And, uh, and then I take it over to the planer and then make another plane surface parallel to that. So that's how you get a flat, clean, plane board like you can see it from the people. Drop saw and lumber like you can see the saw. Okay, so and what's... This is the start of making the pantry. And what's what are you going to use this for? A pantry. A pantry. A a Sorry, your, your voice isn't uh, very good here. Built-in pantry cabinet. Oh, that was a very good radio voice, uh, Dave. Thank you. You should I'm use just it more about often. Delating the microphone. Well, you you got hair around the microphone, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's Dave, good. So we we oh, I forgot that the I forgot that the camera was right there. Yeah, yeah. And Jim, you had a question. Sorry. Yeah, I I had a technical question for Dave. Yeah. Uh, how come you still have your thumbs? <laughs> I still got all 10, baby. 40 years. 10 thumbs. Well, Any there's always a first time, you know. <laughs> Any fires up in Pennsylvania, Dave? Uh, small ones, but it's it's really dry up here. The oh, it is. are already brown. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Walter. Yes. We have fires in Scotland. In the Highlands. No, it's too wet up there. Apparently not. Too dry. 
Oh, must I, well, I guess it is Scotland. Scotland. Sorry, are Scotland you going to go back? Scotland. You're going to go back home, uh, Lane, because you're you're from Glasgow, right? I'm going to find out where you live, Walter. <laughs> one more. Just do a big Sorry. shit in your garden. No, I'm not. You're not a Glasgow. Glaswegian. He's a Geordie. Sorry, I'm a Northumbrian. Northumbrian. Yes, damn it. They have good songs out there in Northumbria. Yes, lots of pipes. That's true. Um, okay, well, Dave, thanks. And hopefully your, your state doesn't burn down. And uh, we'll check back in on you, I guess, right? I like seeing woodwork. Do you? And I'm sure if it did reach deep, yeah, it would be over with quickly because he's got a lot of wood. He's gone. So you won't feel much. won't feel anything. It'll be fine. <laughs> Not much pain. Not at all. No. So, well, we're we're fast losing any of our comedian bits uh, uh, today. So I had a question. Was um, <laughs> Jeez, where's my book? I I even wrote it down. You can't ask me where your book is. I've never been in your house. You're more than welcome to. Good. Like it's uh, fifteen hundred dollars return. Make sure you have the return ticket too when you come here. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I know when I'm not wanted, Walter. No, you're wanted. <laughs> you are actually. I had I had um, a couple of questions here. You know, I'll be darned if I um, if I can remember them. Uh, you know, this is live, right, Jim and Martha? Right? Oh yeah. Uh, so this is like TV. I'm not good with TV. Well, you know, nobody's good with TV. Look at the state of TV. Hey, you right. know. Uh, uh, Since the Tom writer strikes, I've got no questions for you now. Oh, you're scabbing. <laughs> you're scabbing right now. That's, Scabs. That's, yeah. um, you know, uh, Susan Collins had uh, a few words to say about uh, her state. They, we, they recently had uh, the uh, main state uh, anniversary of uh, the state's birthday. It's the state's oh, birthday. Yeah. How how old is the state? Uh, yes, uh, Susan Collins. How, how, how old, old is, is it? State? Uh, hold on. Let me see if we can find her. We just set her up, Jim. We don't. Oh. I mean, just, just yeah. that. We're, you know, Susan. We, we, <laughs> Susan, can what? you come to the Zoom? Uh, uh, yes. Zoom. Senator Collins, uh, we, we have Please. some questions for you on about your state. And uh, well, if you make a big wish, maybe Susan Collins will come here. Susan. There she is. Oh, she's a small Susan. Hello. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey. Hello. Oh, hello there. Well, uh, yeah. S -s 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 Senator thank Collins. You. Thank you, you for having me. Uh, no, it's no problem. I was, we were just wondering, uh, you know, it's it's Maine's birthday recently in March. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to know if you had anything to, to well, tell us about Maine. that's right, Jimmy. That's right. As you know, March 15th is Maine's birthday. And that's right. We were once part of Massachusetts. Did you oh. know that? No, no, that's a new one on me. I'm sure no, nobody in the audience knew that either, except. Well, you know. March 15th. On that day in 1820, some people in Boston said, you know what? We can be bigger assholes than this. Let's make a new state and call it North Bigger Asshole. Oh, well, that, that doesn't seem like a good name. Well, we later changed it to Maine because we didn't have enough ink. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. North bigger asshole. What's the uh, you know Maine has a lot of uh, industry. What uh what's what's what are you the world's largest producer of? Well, as you know, Jimmy, Maine is the world's largest producer of potatoes. Did you know that? Well, that's another thing I did not know about Maine. Well, yes, but ev with everybody dying and supply lines cut, we are literally swimming in potatoes here in Maine. And as always, 
Mainers are handling this crisis with determination and creativity. Instead of throwing our potatoes away, we donate them to our senior living facilities where orderlies stick the potatoes in our seniors' mouths and up their bungholes and then hang them upside down with a lobster hook and let the kids beat them senseless with bats <laughs> until grandma explodes like a fucking pinata. <laughs> Oh, that sounds nice. You know, Maine sounds like a great place to live. Maine. The, yeah. Yes. The mediocre state of Maine. Well, you know, you got to strive for something better. You know, if, if you're at the top of any list, uh, it's no fun. Does the, the, do the Collins family, do they believe in Medicare for all? No, Jimmy, the Collins family does not believe in Medicare for all. We're Why is proud. That? Well, we're proud do it yourselfers. You don't want to have a kid do what I did. Fall down a flight of stairs after your father pushes you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. That, it is That's good. the main way. That's the main way. That is good advice. Thank you. Oh, you want to go to the next thing? Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, I heard I heard Bob Dole was uh, the Doles were at your uh, wedding night. Oh, where did you hear that? I don't know. It's right on this paper page of notes, basically. Well, I'll tell you the story. Did oh, okay. you know on my wedding day? Bob Dole and Elizabeth Dole gave me and Tom a $400 silver serving dish. Oh, that's nice. Well, yeah. Tom was so sexually inexperienced, he actually thought it was my diaphragm. I can't go through the airport security without setting off the metal detector. Jesus. It's not the serving dish I mind so much. It's the tea set he put on top of it. Oh, jeez. Oh, that that's... spout still surprises me when it slips out of my pouch. What am I, a goddamn kangaroo? <laughs> With a husband like that, it's no wonder I never had any children. Wow. <laughs> My husband, Tom, he's a real romantic. He oh, said I reminded him of the ocean. And I said, you mean wild and salty? And he said, no, you make me sick. Well, it, it sounds like a bad experience there. Well, let's talk about Mainers. Let's talk about Mainers. Mainers. We're full of... Yeah. Okay, we're full of potatoes. But did you know it's easy to spot a Mainer by their face? Because it's always covered in lobster bites. I keep telling them you're supposed to boil the damn thing before you eat it. But they oh. never listen. Mainers aren't problem solvers. Oh, that's what <laughs> they should probably listen to you more on that one. That sounds dangerous. We just don't give a shit. But you're big, you know, you're big on how's the child care doing in Maine? I'm against vaccinating babies with fluoride, Jimmy, but I am for fluoridating vaccines with babies. <laughs> Fucking babies. I hate them. Oh. Did you did, know that Maine is famous, though, for its dairy products? I had heard about that, yes. Well, that's right. In Maine, you can even buy organic goat milk soap. Now Mainers have an excuse for smelling like goats, other than the fact that they sleep with them. <laughs> wow, you're not painting a, a not very nice picture of Mainers. Well, did you know why Mainers have so much sex with goats? No. 
because the goats pay better. Oh, I okay. Well, what what do you call a smart person in Maine, Jimmy? Uh, I don't know what. A visitor. Well, that makes <laughs> sense. Why? Makes... Because I'm an insufferable asshole. Okay, well, I've heard that said about you before. Yeah, oh. well, did you know that Maine has no standards for its drinking water? I did know that, yes. Well, that explains my steady diet of moose blood and grain alcohol, or as Mainers call it, a, a bloody bullwinkle. Wow. <laughs> There's a reason, though, why Maine don't, Mainers don't care about their drinking water, because is... moose urine is free. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Senator Susan Collins, for uh, lightening the, the day and the night for all of us and making us feel better about our lives. Is well, Susan going to run for president? Well, I haven't really thought about it, but maybe someday. I mean. You are known as the most bipartisan senator uh, in in Maine. I am? Yes. One million people in Maine. You have a lot of power. <laughs> well, maybe you could run with DeSantis. Well, I suppose. What do you maybe. call a person in Maine who doesn't have explosive diarrhea? Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. A visitor. <laughs> Did well, you know I found out that my diarrhea is hereditary? No, no. Well, of course it is. It runs in my genes. Uh, you know, this is, you really are not setting a good example, a good image for the state of Maine. Mainers are very, very proud. And this kind of publicity is, is not a good reflection on the work ethic and the can-do attitude of Maine. No response, huh? What do you get when you cross a dick with a potato? I, I, I think a dictator. Oh, so you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. It's not even the right response to my response. It, it doesn't matter. Do you, know, do you know how to tell the difference between an oral and a rectal thermometer? No. Oh, so you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> I have everything a man could want. Muscles, a mustache, tattoos. <laughs> Now you're just going through Leonard Barr's old stand-up act. <laughs> I ran into my ex-boyfriend the other day, and he told me my stockings were wrinkled. I wasn't wearing any. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's that was very impolite of him. Well, anyway. I asked my husband, Tom, if I'm the only one he's been with. And he said, yes, Susan, the others have been at least sevens or eights. <laughs> I don't remember that one. Yeah, Jimmy, the goats pay better. Well, that makes sense. Ah. Well, it's it's been wonderful, Senator Susan, Susan Collins. It's a great honor talking to you once again, and thank you for coming by. Thank you, Jimmy. It's been a pleasure. I'm Senator Susan Collins, and I'm full of clams. <laughs> <laughs> Better than ticks. Hmm. That's right. Thank you, Martha. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Susan. Thank you. <laughs>
Mm. Okay, I like that. Clam loaf in here. Yeah. Like Jim, I was going to ask you what what was your first uh, TV show you ever worked on? Uh, it was uh, uh, it was in it was cable access show in uh, San Francisco, and it was called uh, Dick. Bright's comedy cartoons, I think. And it was, uh, that was did it. You do voices for it or did you act on it or? No, we wrote, we wrote uh, a bunch of uh, sketches for Dick Bright and uh, another comic, uh, Jeremy Kramer, who's a, a genius uh, and uh, a legend from the San Francisco Bay area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we did our best to write some some sketches. Some of them got on, some of them didn't. Forever lost. Oh, really? Ether, so, ether. No tape. No tape. Not, not that I know of. Uh, I think we did comedy uh, stand up shows before that and during and after. You know, mm -hmm. those typical cable shows that uh, comedy uh, comics, stand up comics, get on the evening at the Improv and mm -hmm. and uh, stand up tonight and TV half hour comedy hour that kind of thing but the first one that i ever wrote for besides that was uh uh the daily show yeah okay that must have been exciting though going on on to it the first time that was with the original guy right yes uh, craig kilborn that was with the original guy it was uh non-union and it was non-union for my entire four years i was there okay and uh for a bunch of more years after that when uh john stewart was in charge and uh there's a reason for that right because uh you know, yeah yeah stewart's not very good with unions is what i heard so no he's anti-union right which is um anti-writers union that's the way it is with a lot of hosts they don't want you know so-called liberal hosts uh, of comedy shows and they they're, they put on a, a facade that they're pro-union and liberal and workers' rights, but not for their show. Nope. Everybody's well, got a... It, there's no fucking job security anymore. Excuse my language. There's no, no, no job security in, any longer. There's no fucking job security anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that guy in Georgia, um, was it Tyler Perry? Didn't he... He had a um, production facility... And he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't let the union come involved or something. Am I wrong on? I could be wrong. Is I that don't. I don't know. John Hayes is that? There was a, a media mogul in uh, Georgia who was a liberal uh, comedian, and uh, he wouldn't let um, his staff wasn't uh, part of. Yeah, the that's yeah. Tyler Perry is an anti-union, even though he's a member of Screen yeah. Actors Guild, and he's been in some major films, so he gets all those nice residuals and benefits, but not right. his crew in Atlanta. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Ellen Ellen was anti-union. Still is, I, I, I would assume. Well, she sat with George Bush, right? Tried to... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, get, uh, give him a remedial uh, work uh, makeover. Yeah. You know, and, by, you know, I was sat with George Bush and and Stephen Colbert had Henry Kissinger on a couple of times. Mm -hmm. you know? And what about Kissinger being a hundred? What are your thoughts on that, guys? A uh, well, hundred too many? I think it's still not too too late to uh, try him for war crimes. Take him to the Hague, kidnap him. Yes, you know, we should have Israel come over. They're good at kidnapping war criminals. <laughs> Send him to Gitmo. Yeah, send him to fucking Gitmo. Um, you know, put some electrodes on what's left of his genitalia and see how he likes it. Dust everywhere. Um, Dust everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. why why is that? These guys make it big. I mean, they they come up because uh, it's 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 pretty hard to get up in the American entertainment industry, right? You know, a lot of stand up, a lot of comedians got to know people. Uh, maybe Weinstein, whatever, and then they be they become the boss. They have a good show, yet they don't 
look after the people underneath them. Uh, well, the th ones there are some that do those. Yeah, there there's <laughs> some. I think Conan I think, uh, did so. I think they have a big, big problem with being scared shitless when they get into a position of leadership and they have 11 riders. Every riding team I've been with has been a great riding team with really uh, individual riding talents. And, and, and every job I've been with the, the boss or head rider always wants everything to go through the same filter. So you uh, just automatically negate everybody, anybody's individual writing talents, and it has to go through the same uh, kind of bland filter. And then you have the host who, you know, has this just put an incredible amount of material that eleven writers write for them, so mm -hmm. they can't decide what they want. You know, mm -hmm. they don't have the. They don't have the what it takes to just make a decision on something that they should know is funny already or take a chance and just go with it. So the that's why there were endless rewrites on some of the shows I was on. And that's needless. The you know, more you rewrite a, a sketch or a joke, the uh, less funny it becomes. Less organic, right? Yes, yeah. Right. And uh yeah, so you just ruin the talent that you have, and then you start abusing the talent that you have by uh, making them work eight hours. I'm sorry, but after after six hours of writing the same joke or writing sketches, you're not funny anymore. You can't write anything anymore. That's that's just the way it is. It's, it's the 18th hour you become funny again, so you have to stay there, right? That's just the 18th hour when you start. It turns into a. Uh, 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 Lord of the Flies, and uh, <laughs> and the writers start going after each other. Right. Did you ever write a joke uh, that the host um, was saying wrong, and you had to get him to say it right or try to? Yeah. Uh, well, with the uh, Craig Kilborn, that that happened a few times, just because he didn't know the how to pronounce a word or like right. the sarcophagus, sarcophagus, you know, he, he would say. Sarcophagus. <laughs> or, you know, he, you know, he didn't, Boutrous, Boutrous, golly, he didn't know that. He had to, why do I have to say it twice? And, um, <laughs> that kind of stuff. You know, that's innocent enough. At least he's he's honest yeah. and he's saying, hey, 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 I don't understand this or I don't know it. But And he had people like John Stewart who was just... I don't know what you thought of his stand-up comedy or his co comedic talents before The Daily Show, but he, I can't remember a single uh, comedy bit or joke that he, he's ever done in any stand-up routine he's, he's ever done. I, he, I think he's just kind of a bland comic with a lot of uh, mm -hmm. confidence. And, you know, he was, he was good for MTV, his first show. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And they they wanted somebody new and so called young with a face, and they got fresh him, and but, short. But he was not. He they never went made from the tallest guy. guy to the shortest guy they could find. So he seemed like a, he seemed like a guy who didn't have a, a sense of humor. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I I don't think John Stewart has a sense of humor, uh, mm -hmm. organic sense of humor. I think it's kind of forced and artificial. He knew jokes. Which is a different thing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's um, true. Yeah. Um, well, well, people like... Um, I, I don't know him, obviously, because I'm up north, but like Conan O'Brien, I had a lot of sympathy for him about the Tonight Show and the Jay Leno thing. But then mm -hmm. I heard Jay Leno was really good with his staff and with the union. Yeah. Well, he's been, it's, everybody I know has worked with him. Uh, so he, he's the nicest guy to work for, and he was always uh, con he was always thankful for his writers. He would always uh, mention them on air, you know, mm -hmm. especially during the strike. So that's different from people like Maher and John Stewart, who who and Ellen, who seem to inherently resent their writers, resent having to have them, right? Because it 
that's that's the dichotomy here. We have somebody like Stewart come on board a show that's already kicked off and and popular for two years. So virtually everything that's part of the show has already been invented, mm-hmm. and so you know, what can he do? And, and he resented ha- having to have writers write but the he, material he does. He he wasn't funny by himself. <laughs> <laughs> not, not without writers, not for that kind of show. That show was, you know, that was a live show. Yeah, every uh, day too, right? So, oh, four, yeah, four nights a week. And, right. But then Leno was a popular comedian, wasn't he, beforehand? So maybe that's what it is. He sort of recognizes good comedians and yeah. keeps and them he was, you, might, you might keep them on the tours by being a comedian himself as well. And he was a brilliant stand up comic. Jay Leno, I th- think, still is. is his early days when he was would come on the Letterman show and he was, he was a brilliant uh, stand-up comic. One of the best, I think. Right. And he you're, just made it. You're, you're frozen, Jim. Oh, my video or my audio? Your video. Or, oh, my oh, audio is fine. Well, Sorry, just, I, I, I ruined your story. I apologize. No, you didn't. He, he, it's not much of a story, but. It's it's, a good, it's one we just, haven't we haven't heard before, so I want to hear it. <laughs> he just made a he just made a uh, Leno made a conscious decision to make a billion dollars, <laughs> and he <laughs> you know and he went middle of the road kind of uh, safe comedy uh, mm-hmm. for the t- Tonight Show, and he got his wish. He did make a billion dollars. Well, have you have you seen David Letterman stand up at all? I've only seen videos, and I'm not sure I find it very humorous, but I could be wrong. His early stuff is kind of edgy. Uh, what is it? But but it's you know it's early, and it's it's not very remarkable. I think he's, he's much better as a talk show host. You know? Then he made a conscious decision to make a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, <laughs> so. <laughs> Somebody I mentioned uh, Bill Burr. I think he's a, he's incredible. I think he's. I, I like him very much. Do you watch The Mandalorian at all? No, I. Uh, no, a friend he, of mine. He's is on it. Yeah, he's in the first season, I believe, and uh, it was rather good. He was rather good. I think it was the first or second. First. Have you seen the Have you seen Bill Burr's Philly rant? Where he has a go the crowd. Twelve minutes long of pure. Oh. oh phenomenal. Oh. Yeah, it's great. He just does not hold back. It's just phenomenal. <laughs> right. Because you he think has... he's going to get lynched at the beginning, but by the end, he's got the like, eight now of his hand. It's brilliant. Well, he's really one. Good. He's tip, tippy-toed through, through everything. Like Dave Chappelle got himself in trouble. And Bill Burr, I mean, he's still outspoken, but he's he he threads it really, really nice, right? As a yeah, I think, I think he does a good job of... Uh... Threading it. I mean, he, he has a disclaimer occasionally. I, as I recall, that uh, he just says stuff to piss people off. He doesn't really believe what he's saying a lot. Sometimes, you know, it's it's. Well, I so, can walk around with that disclaimer easy. Yeah, yeah. so he can kind of get away with it, and and he, he really does a good job. Yeah, you know, he's very smart. He's very smart. Oh, that's good. Got to him doing something horrible tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's true um martha you're quiet how come how come dear i don't know i probably exhausted tired maybe oh all that planting yeah i've been, i've been, had a long day in the garden right but um um in the garden in if you garden. if you plant <laughs> if you plant plant clams, do you get more? Or? <laughs> we we use clam shells for fertilizer. Yeah, okay. so they add calcium to the soil. Well, why did you guys move to Maine? Because uh, you're a you're a California guy, aren't you, Jim? I'm a Jim California is, guy. Yeah. I lived well, in Maine. Uh, I I grew up. I'm actually from the Boston area and I um my parents had a a summer cottage in Maine and 
York, Maine. And okay. so I, I, um, I've been coming up here for the summer since I was a little kid. And I settled here about 10 years ago. Um, I moved to Kennebunk. Um, and that's where I was when I, well, actually I met Jim when I lived in York, but uh, Jim came out here. Uh, how many years ago, Jim? It was like, well, the first time I came out was in 2016, and uh, then she called the cops because I, I wasn't invited. It was out of the blue. And then after that kind of blew over for a while, um, I moved out here officially, and uh, like as soon as the pandemic the started. pandemic hit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe in Norway would like to know, Jim... Can you talk about working with the researchers for The Daily Show? Or were you writers, the researchers? Who, who are the researchers for The Daily Show? Oh, we had great researchers. Yes, we had to have researchers because back then, all we had was a, a rudimentary uh, internet. And uh, we would come in at 9 or 9.30 and uh, get the... Uh, collect the stale uh, bagels and then sit in the uh, writer's room with the head writer and look at the latest AP feed of stories from around the country. And then we'd uh, pick the stories to go to write on from the AP feed. Usually there was a horrific uh, Florida story. That was part of it. And then for each act, we'd pick, you know, a story for first, second, and third act. And then we'd go into our, uh, uh, prospective rooms we get we were each in a team of two people each and we'd go into our offices and we'd write our stories jokes to each story we were assigned and the researchers would be in the back meantime after the, we chose the stories they'd be printing out reams of uh, AP material and research on each one of the stories so we could have something to write to other than just the video but that's how it worked yeah we had i wish i could remember uh <laughs> it's been so long i can't remember I uh one of the names of the researchers but i think he is still uh he stayed with the daily show for years he might even still be there in some capacity i don't know mm -hmm. and, and that the daily show is winding up right or are they mm -hmm. still going isn't um is it trevor isn't he leaving I guess so, but is uh, somebody taking over? I don't know. I don't know. I, I hope it goes to someone else. Because I hope uh, artificial intelligence takes over the show. It's taken over this show. So that's for sure. And Martha, um, here's the trick about Maine. Your parents went there for the summer. You don't stay for the winter. So That's right just saying hey it's got beautiful winters here i i've never seen a a beach with snow on it before we, we would have <laughs> stayed but we didn't have any plumbing in the winter time so that would have made things difficult yes yes indeed yeah. we yeah. all know about plumbing up here in the winter time so <laughs> i don't have any plumbing well you know that's when you did have the oak <laughs> We'll be right back with <laughs> after a word from Milano. <laughs> well, what I, the fuck I'm, was that? What is that? I don't know. I we just, let's just check in with Dave, unless Dave's too far away to hear us. Um, we're looking at wood, a whole bunch of wood. Yeah, how's Dave's boat coming along? Yeah, how you doing there, Dave? Uh, any plants? Can, can somebody set a timer for four hours? <laughs> <laughs> you might have to hang around, Jim. Are you going to have a little purr? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I uh, joined the one face nice and flat. And now this is the planer, this planer. I'll plane it down to probably seven eggs. Let's see what that be, 20 millimeters. So. Can't hear a word you're saying, but uh, it sounds good. Well, I can, <laughs> I can make out some of it. He's, he was telling us uh, how he later he was going to uh, 
polish his Burlwood dildos. Besides that, we're going to play in these boards to 20 millimeters. You now we that? can't see it. <laughs> so Fighting how come up. you're using millimeters? Aren't you an imperial kind of guy? Because I'm condescending to the northerners. Fellow anti-imperialist. That's right. I think the Brit, um, you guys in Britain there, you were close to going back to imperial measurements, right, uh, Lane? Pounds and ounces for weighing fruit, apparently. Right. There was a local man. <coughs> the balls just dropped there. Did you hear that? And it, <coughs> there was a local man. Um, you, and, you and Jim have the same plumbing problem. Yes. Sorry. Local man got famous in the British media for fighting the good fight and taking the government to court so it could keep selling things in pounds and ounces when they changed over to the metric system. Oh, and awesome. he was one of the main heroes of Brexit. And he got his wish. But the thing is, the law, ironically, didn't say you couldn't measure things in pounds and ounces. You just had to advertise it in kilograms and or in ounces if you wanted to. So you were just being an arse. That's Britain. <laughs> Thank, uh, it's been a British minute by Lane. So I appreciate Britain. it. And and I appreciate you guys, Martha and Jim. Uh, yes. Yes. You guys yes. Take care. Sorry for putting you on the spot today, uh, Susan. I mean, Martha. Oh. I have the Queen's Cup. You do. You've got her. That's Elizabeth. Yeah. And and Jim had his uh, moose milk. Was it, was My that? mommy loved Hitler. <laughs> she kind of that is awesome yes is that it was is, that for was this that is for a, Lane? a that was commemorative um cup from the silver jubilee from 1977 uh -huh. right oh, i was only one and i still remember the parties outside would, yeah. would you believe that uh, I, I do well remember screen screen screen. Screen. <laughs> my mom made us watch the uh, <laughs> celebration so a little, little bit older than uh, why they're here is because of us. So, <laughs> no, need to be muted. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. We'll we'll let you go. And um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> hello. 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 <laughs> Toodaloo. All right. I'm I'm hoping you guys will come back next Friday too. Sure. Let's make this a thing. Yes. Uh, if we yes. should. We should. We should make it a thing. That's right. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to do some uh, demonstrate some belly dancing next week. And you better put some weight on. <clears throat> you know, I'm just saying. I mean, hey, your me. vegetarian diet must be working. You look, you look pretty good uh, for your age. Uh, and um, this is getting really inappropriate, Wally. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're not that. recording this. No, no, no. <laughs> what are you going to stick in your belly button for this belly dance? A Milano, excellent. <laughs> right. Okay, excellent. thank you very much, guys. We're going to go to Ann Lee. You're... Thank you. I thank know you. you guys probably haven't. Hello, goodbye. You guys probably haven't eaten yet, but stick around if you want and ask questions to Ann Lee, if you want. And thank you very much. Well, Lane, that was into interesting, wasn't it, buddy? Always is. You know, he's a, got, yeah, no, Jim and Martha. They're really good. So next up, we have, we have our favorite, Ann Lee. Is she, she in the hoose? Ann Lee. This is not the quickest show in the world at all. Um, oh, we forgot to mention, please look at the link uh, in the description and get the newsletter and join us on our zoom club uh starts every friday at 6 p.m uh become one of the uh, autonomous uh collection collective collective sorry yeah. i i just think it's like a collection of of not oddballs it's, connect, I mean, it's a collection of collectives so you won't you won't find better people but you'll find interesting people how about that yeah it's impossible to find better people that's right. And speaking of which, oh my God. Is that Professor Ann today? 
Hi, Walt. <laughs> is um oh, the tax mat is it tax season or <laughs> yeah it is listen your uh, canadian guests are here so i was thinking you maybe you want to talk to them first and i can follow one after and let them get back well to no their no lives. uh we 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 set it for the bottom of the hour i just suggested that they come early just in case Okey-doke. and and i actually have some stuff for you but i don't know if you want we have oh, time. No, I, the, the only thing I want to talk about is this poor, poor guy, Ron Klaus in uh, in Michigan, who uh, <laughs> is uh, is going to get sued by by a civilian. Uh, a this Ron guy is a former commissioner of the uh, Traverse uh, Grand Traverse uh, uh, County. Uh, so, but if you want to ask your questions first, ask your questions first. No, we'll go. We'll go with yours. Actually, to be honest, I'm going to bring Lane in for this, if you don't mind, Lane. I don't mind whatsoever. There we go. There's Lane. Uh, since uh, oh, Professor John, I should I should mention he's uh, at a high school reunion. Uh, congratulations for him finally graduating. <laughs> so, <laughs> his uh, his son's graduating. <laughs> so, he so finally gets to go to the prom. That's he gets he's, to throw his hat. Uh, he's <laughs> go, old go enough to, to buy problem. airplane. He's old enough to buy airplane. Anyway, right. so I need to get a glass of water. So you two chat and tell us all about what's this guy's name? Josh. Uh, Ron. Uh, Ron. He, uh, Ron Close. Ron. I, Ron Close. Did you yeah, say Klaus Klaus, or Close or Close? Klaus, but he's in northern Michigan, so who knows? It could be close. Oh. Uh, oh. You know, those, you know, he's sort of on the uh, ring finger of the Michigan paw, right? Michigan is a kind of paw, right? With a little thumb on the right hand side, on the eastern side of Michigan, the state of Michigan. Well, and so it, there's like a, there, there's a county up into the upper left called uh, Grand Traverse, and uh, it's a fairly big county, and it has, uh, you know, po- politicians. So, a county with politicians, Annie. <laughs> I won't have it be said. Well, they called it a micro pol- um, my- micro micropolis, I guess. Is it, they're yeah. micropolitans. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Annie, what's uh, this bloke been up to? What's this? What's the crack? Well, the the dude was uh, this. There's a lawsuit that, as of uh, two days ago. Uh, can go forward in terms of uh, being a uh, uh, a lawsuit that was appealed to the uh, Sixth Circuit. And uh, uh, this guy is a former politician, and I don't feel quite so sorry for him. Um, a woman by the name of Pat McIntosh decided to sue him for uh, abr- abridging her uh, uh, speech rights because they had a little meeting right after the uh, insurrection, the uh, January sixth insurrection, and uh, uh, they were they were want they wanted to uh, this little commission. They what appears to be a bunch of good old boys in the uh, upper in upper Michigan. I don't know what they call them in Minnesota. They call it up north. I'm in Michigan. I'm not sure what they call it. But, uh, Assholes. It's north. <laughs> Well, that too, probably. Anyway, these good old boys decided that they would uh, introduce some yakking about the Proud Boys. They were kind of uh, being pro-Proud Boys in Mm. their uh, uh, county commission meeting. And uh, a woman by the name of uh, Pat McIntosh gets up, and it's a Zoom meeting. And so she objects to this. She says, you know, uh, you guys should be uh, accountable for... Uh, uh, saying you're you're in favor of this kind of insurrection stuff, and it sort of goes back and forth a bit. And this county commissioner, Ron Klaus, go uh, leaves the uh, the screen for a second, the frame for a second, comes back in, uh, toting a uh, uh, it looks like an assault rifle with a scope on it. And anyway, he sort of <laughs> waves it, waves it around, and. Uh, Pat McIntosh just keeps on talking and says, you know, you know, this is not going to intimidate me. Uh, but yet, you know, subsequently there were there were a county meeting, 100 folks showed up and, and that kind of county, 100 folks showing up for a meeting is actually pretty good. 
And so it, you know, goes back and forth and nobody apologizes. And, uh, you know, and, and Pat McIntosh sues, um, sues this guy for <laughs> abridging her speech rights, you know, uh, intimidating her with, with his gun. Now, what he does is defend himself on one particular point. This is why it, it got uh, it thrown out from the district, uh, from the local court to the district, district appeals court. Uh, in that it was qualified because he was a commissioner, he could be protected from lawsuits like this. Apparently, wow. I think the, the commission talked to its lawyers and sort of suggested that, well, dude, you better not run for re-election. So he's now just a citizen and, uh, uh, you know, being just a guy, and uh, I assume he has a lawyer and everything. So on Wednesday, the uh, the appeals court uh, voted two to one to send it back down. Oh. It's all gone quiet, and she's dropped off. And Lee, can you come back to us from the void? Did I drop out again? It's not your fault. I didn't touch anything. I didn't touch anything. Uh, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> maybe I should have touched something. Yeah. Anyway. Have you ever tried uh, hitting your computer a lot? Yeah, I, I do that all the time. Uh, anyway, so that's that's what's happened. Uh, what was interesting to me was the idea, first of off, that a county commissioner rather than a cop would declare uh, you know qualified immunity. And secondly, that it was about, of course, about speech rights, about the freedom of speech, the First Amendment, and of course, uh, coming into uh, perhaps a conflict with the Second Amendment, uh, taking sort of literally your right to bear arms, that is being able to wave guns around. And it made me think about all of those other cases, all of which are arbitrated in the United States in all kinds of bizarre ways. So for example, mm -hmm. In Michigan, uh, uh, also in Michigan, the the fellow who was a teenager, is, uh, uh, I guess a junior or senior in high school, and his parents let, uh, bought him a gun. And uh, uh, needless to say, is a little bit unstable. And apparently he was making drawings with guns in them uh, before yeah, w when his parents were called in. And needless to say that no one searched him. And apparently this is the same day that he shot people. Um, mm -hmm. He had the gun in his backpack. Now, they, sh you know, needless to say, bad things happen. But the indicator, of course, was whether you make a drawing of someone with a gun and whether that, you know, sort of uh, is a disruption of, of a school, for example. But if you're the mm -hmm. only one drawing a gun and no one else sees it except the teacher, is that really a disruption? I'm not on the side of people carrying guns around but the but it's a very interesting part because occasionally um uh, another case is a, a kid uh 13 years old i think and i can't remember which state but uh they were uh, an autistic kid and it's not about being autistic it's simply that uh, he drew a gun uh a really crude <laughs> It was little sort of tableau, you know, where where he, the little stick figure, was carrying a gun and shooting a friend. So therefore, he got arrested. That's I mean, actually, they they brought the cops in and stuff like that. Uh, and there, are unfortunately, numerous other cases where somebody drawing a gun uh, gets prosecuted in some some uh, shape or form, particularly if you're a kid and. Gone again, Anneli. She's gone. The NSA, she, CIA keeps cutting her off. Well, it is. It's the feds, man. But it, it reminds us of uh, just after Columbine, when that kid was arrested for holding like a chicken wing or something, suggestively, like a gun. No, it was oh, a finger nugget. This is like finger gun stuff. And yeah. I put in... It, it, in my little uh, thing I put up at Daily Coast, I, I put a, a few things on how people get prosecuted for threats over media where or in person where you make the finger sign. Bang. And uh, 
you know, get prosecuted for making a, uh, a threat, a terrorist threat, needless to say. And, uh, uh, you know, finger guns are an interesting problem because they're much harder to regulate and uh, uh, it, they're difficult to store. And, uh, you know, and and I guess they have they're infinitely automatic in that sense. So that these are all the kind of problems and I these are are interesting problems, whether you're pointing a finger gun or drawing a bath or, you know, they'll never get away with it in a Catholic school. Because oh, they've got pictures that there's a doubler here because they've got pictures of priests drawn and painted like with the fingers doing the finger guns like that haven't they hey priest doing finger guns on a, on a painting these are iconic uh oh, yeah. anyway uh, the yeah. fact is there is case law for this now you know it's entirely unacceptable that our local law includes drawing a weapon to respond to protecting property so that's mm -hmm. one example the NRA was angry about that uh as mm -hmm. I said uh you know, uh, 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 in the Michigan case, a teacher found a drawing by Ethan Crumbly that alarmed her because it depicted a handgun. Now, they didn't frisk the, the kid and, you know, uh, problems occurred. And then uh, officials at an Arizona school suspended a 13-year-old boy for sketching what looked like a gun, saying the action posed a threat to his classmates. So, uh, you know, in Chandler, oh. Arizona, that happened to occur. Go ahead. Now, I can't believe I'm agreeing with the NRA on this one, but at the same time, you can understand, given the amount of school shootings there are, that they're going to be a bit twitchy on people being a bit obsessed with guns at school, so you can sort of understand it, but getting police involved, I think, is a bit harsh, isn't it? Well, the problem is a uh, large interpretive problem and, and raises a much more important question about whether the populace is adequately or cognitively uh, prepared to deal with the range of interpretation of such a nonverbal action. So, for example, in the case of these two guys who are having a dispute, the usual neighbor type dispute, uh, they held that. Uh, the evidence still supported the conviction, not because the gun-like hand gesture was having. Oh, oh, tension's gone a bit wobbly again, Anley. We got to do a fundraiser for better internet. Access. Someone needs to shoot Anley's internet. I tell you that. Yeah, maybe leave your video off, Ann. Didn't touch anything. Yeah, it might be the video. You might be scaring the video with your mask. Ah, uh, true. And looks aren't everything, as they say. But the <laughs> the fact is, uh, there there was a dispute between two two guys. They pointed fingers at each other, and uh, for a similar but even dumber incident, you may peruse these items from 2013. A seven year old boy who was suspended for allegedly biting a pastry into the shape of a gun and then using <laughs> said pastry gun to make inappropriate gestures that disrupted the class. No one was harmed in this incident because it was, as they say, just a pastry. So <laughs> I am quite amused by uh, all of these uh, gun elements. And it is, of course, a much larger question about, you know, whether frightening of people uh, is is, you know, becomes problematic. And, and how yeah. free are you to express your taste or convictions or preferences? And it's a much larger kind of question, you know, the, that Ron Klaus, our Michigan uh, Grand Traverse County commissioner, uh, perhaps should have had the right, but not the qualified immunity to wave his gun around on Zoom. Uh, whether he gets sued for it or whether, you know, this is one of those cases where, given the venue, probably somebody's going to get one dollar in damages. But uh, it's an interesting kind of question and one that is not insignificant because someone could, you know, point quest uh, questionably point things at you. I'd like to make a disclaimer for the entire um, autonomous collective crowd that wafting your piece around on camera is strictly prohibited. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking oh, of uh, wa wafting your piece there. Speak uh, for yourself. 
Dave, Dave is <laughs> Dave is putting some hips into that wood uh, that he's uh, uh, there. Painting. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you were careful with that glue on Dave. Yeah, that's right. How many more pieces do you got, Dave? Obviously, he can't. I'm not going to say. Must be very noisy. Where it oh, is. 10. That's fine. Don't turn off the machine for us. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> Some good TV right here. Yeah. Action camera. Your, oh, your you got to do a whole lift. Ooh. Ooh. That looks rather satisfying, ASMR, doesn't it? That looks rather plain. <laughs> Indeed. Just saying. Flat and smooth. That's right. This section so is going flat. So, Anne, John, John would never forgive us if we didn't talk about the debt bill ceiling. What are your thoughts? <laughs> you, I'll, I'll go on, on mute for this bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty boring, ain't it? <laughs> well, it passed the Senate. Uh, only 36 people voted against it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's probably going to happen uh, relative to signing. Which well, I, Bernie's Bernie's you know, not it, voting it, for it. He said, "Well, you know, there there have been sort of uh, odd odd couples, uh, odd odd fellows with uh, with uh, in terms of voting yes or no. My Congress critter voted no in the House on it, um, and one could say, and uh, you know, uh, Lauren Boebert could claim that she voted, she was going to vote no on it. That she said that she was, and that's interesting too because you have extreme right wing person voting no on on the the original motion in the House. Uh, now the the fact is she couldn't vote because she was too stupid to show up on time for the vote, which is interesting. Um, w whether you blame the staff, for I, that, I've never but, heard um, a stupid in Lorraine. Uh, Bobert or Bobert on in the same sentence before. So. Indeed. Uh, needless to say, you know, that it's going to go forward. Uh, the I think the benefit, of course, is that they can't bring this up next year during an election year. And that's probably the biggest benefit from it. That's on right. the other hand, a hundred and thirty six some odd billion dollars is going to was cut from the original proposal, uh, which, you know, this neither here nor there i suppose because it is only 136 billion and each billion could be you know uh how many bombers does that make or whatever so that was cut that's off. the other cut. relationship wasn't that cut from the R irs yes uh, uh, so we you know we, we have uh some interesting you know uh problems but I, as i said i think from a tactical point of view it allows uh the Republicans to say sort of that they resisted, something, but fortunately for a two year period, they can't make much hay out of it. And it's not going to result in more chaos during election year, which is, I think, a very important problem, a much bigger problem than we saw in the Trump during the Trump administration. So really, that's my little that's my reading on the uh, debt ceiling issue, of course, uh, acknowledging that it's just absurd. And that only two countries in the entire globe have such uh, uh, rules or statutes. Or, well, it's not even a statute. Um, us in Denmark, and Denmark does it uh, just simply as a bureaucratic detail, whereas we don't do it. We actually fight about it, which is even stupider. So, uh, yeah, well, it, um, it is, especially if the money's been voted on and budgeted, and then you then you got another chance the party has to to cut things, right? Right. It's, it's, it's just, uh, you know, it's a, a nuisance, if nothing else. And again, that's what the GOP is doing these days. I, I think there's plenty of other things, but, uh, right. you know, we're in a country that uh, prosecutes people for drawing guns. <laughs> that's, that's true. 
I don't, you know, uh, our nation is just filled with absurd little laws. I think there's still paper bed laws, right, in the states. Um, you what know, kind of you law? buy an alcohol. Oh, oh, oh well, and well, well, you, you, you buy have laws. You get you can't fill up your own car in New Jersey and stuff, right? <laughs> And... Oh, well, there's that. Yes. But I mean, if you buy an alcoholic beverage and you're consuming it outdoors, you uh, have to consume it with a paper bag around the bottle. Really? So good old ordinances. days. Well, they, they oh, just, yeah, good. We're, we're just catching up because now you can consume an a, a alcoholic beverage in a park now. And before you oh, could, there you go. But when I was in Denmark, you could walk around with it, right? So, oh, no, well, you know, this is just the oddity of, of certain things. But it, it it is interesting. I mean, because what what is it? It, it is a kind of effects uh, argument, you know. In right. Consuming alcoholic beverages in public, what is that? Does that affect children? I guess they see it okay more okay to do it because it's not in a paper bag or if it's in a paper bag you automatically assume that it's alcohol which in high school helped your <laughs> oh just lost and and you're i don't know if there's a tornado there or something it's it's um i appreciate the words you say when i can hear them <laughs> uh, so we're going to is uh is rick in the house Welcome to the Hotel California. WHLL Hell's Rock Radio. Today's hits, yesterday's favorites. The classic crunch at lunch with real relevant host Rusty Rush Limbaugh continues. We just heard the Eagles for 6,000 times now. I'm Rusty Rush Limbaugh with the top headlines for your <laughs> porridge break. You're, you're, you're ahead of me there, Rush. How are, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you, Walter? Good. How's hell? How's hell, buddy? It's doing fine. But look, you understand, I'm live on the air right now trying to do my news bit while I spin the discs for classic rock radios, Hell's Rock Radio Hits. Do you understand that? What's the name of your show, Rush? No, no, no. It's not a show. I'm just a damn DJ now. They took away my show when I got to hell. We should have took away your show when you were alive, buddy. No, no, you don't understand. It's, it's, it's downright an injustice. I play the Eagles over and over again, and then they let me read some headlines. It's as if I never made it in AM talk radio. Well, that's it. You're still on AM then, right? That's a, its own form of hell. Well, hell only has AM radio. And as you can see, this is a problem for me, as modern cars are coming without AM receivers anymore. True. Feminazis. Well, satellite radio is the way to go now, I guess. Eh? My partisanship. Hey. So, I, now, so you're 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 playing the you're playing Hotel California uh, day and constantly, night constantly right? over and over again d- until it drives one insane. But this is truly hell. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Even their now, last I- album. Mm. I have some headlines that I was going to read to the fine people who are commuting back to their horrible lunch breaks in hell. And if you don't mind, I'd like to get to this before time runs out. Do you mind? I do not mind at all. Uh, So President Biden is signing the debt ceiling bill today after mindlessly tripping on a sandbag yesterday. I'd say he's too old, but I'm dead. Unemployment remains low as my boss, Roger Ailes, hyphenated Satan, was able to claim so many souls during the COVID boom that I'm telling you folks, Trump 2024, make hell great again. Wildfire season, seeing major growth. And while it doesn't directly affect my fellow Americans here in hell, I fully support hell on earth. My good friend and roommate, Ronald Reagan, is excited to see Hunter Biden's nudes. Bipartisanship. Now, while I've got your ear, folks, I want to remind you that the Hell Rock Radio Summer Bash is coming up this weekend at the only venue in town, the Outback Steakhouse. Neil Pert's Jazz Quartet opens Friday, and Pat Boone will perform his metal album in its entirety on Saturday night. Ouch. The only venue in town and the only game in town. Go watch. You have no choice. Ron DeSantis, despite sealing his 
fate and selling his soul to my boss, Roger Ailes, hyphenated Satan, continues to flounder, reinforcing my theory that Florida is where I and the GOP governors running for president go to die. Say his last name, loser. Mike Pence is slated to hang his hat in the ring. He's actually overdue here. He's on an arrival date of January 6, 2021, but he somehow slipped out and continues to live despite having died internally 35 years ago. Bipartisanship. I'd also like to add Sam Cedar as a hack. Also, Joe Manchin remains one of my favorite senators. Joe Walsh, uh, my good buddy and Tuesday golf partner, he loves Manchin. And sometimes we head up to D.C. through the Comet Pizza basement portal, and we have lunch there with him. We have we call it munching with mansion. Oh, now you're up to speed and back to six more hours of the Eagles at Hotel California, only on WHLL Hell's Rock Radio. Walter, was there anything else? Uh, no, but I appreciate you dropping dropping by or dropping up, I guess. All um, right, now back to the commute. <laughs> You folks get to your Chipotle's and get back to whatever positions you mindlessly serve at. Rush, thanks for dropping by, buddy. <laughs> I, is there anything we can do for you? You think hell might like, have mellowed, Rush? I think so. I could use a Tums. I think he was meaner before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rush, you, you take care uh, as best you can. To and, the uh, hotel, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was Rush. And Dave, do you you still got more? Uh, how's your how's your woodworking going, Dave? Because we're going to bring in Cameron and uh, Charity right away here. So I'm going to remove you. You're good? Okay, keep up the good work, buddy. That's ah, working with your hands. Good job. All right. Uh, man. Still, I'm still not good at this. Uh, so Cameron, 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 where are you? There you are. Uh, we'll get you to start your video if you guys don't mind. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I really have. We'll get you to unmute as well if you don't Hi. mind. Hi. Oh, geez. Look at the suntans you guys are getting. You guys are good. Yeah, we're, we're baked for sure. <laughs> How's the shoes holding up? Uh, we, we both got new sets now. Um, I, I'm my auntie seen my feet and she's like, you go get yourself shoes right now. So I went to go myself shoes that day. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And yeah. And um, Cameron well, actually got some given to him by uh, another person that's doing an awareness campaign across Canada. He's actually biking. But yeah, I well, seen, you, seen what yeah. he is using and gave him. I seen shoes. that on your Facebook. Well, let, let's start off with uh, for, for our newer viewers. Um, what exactly are you doing? Let's just a synopsis. One second, we're gonna adjust our video. Adjust the way you guys are looking really good, though. I have to say, you, you yeah. guys are. Thank you. Um, so, what we're doing is we are walking across Canada to spread awareness on missing and murdered Indigenous people nationwide. Um, we want to make sure that we are opening up people to have those conversations and um, we're learning a lot on the way as well. Like that's one thing that I've noticed is that we've been learning a lot. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, yeah, just. What, what are you learning a lot about different uh, just tribes or, or people? Yeah. Different people, um, just different customs. There's also a lot of things like um, just, other things that are going on like there's we're, we're used to bc we're used to everything that goes in our on in our province we're used to being right along the highway of tears and all those things right right so we're learning about a, a lot about other organizations that are out there working on prevention and um stuff that they work with the aftercare things like that um uh remember when you're asking us about reconciliation in the last one there and our perception of it being in Northern BC, we um, got invited out to Shiloh military base there by a member from our CKDNA member. 
So it's one of the communities I was raised up in. And mm -hmm. we got to see some of the Canadian Armed Forces um, efforts towards reconciliation. So that was that was different. And it was interesting. It's it actually was it, what, a lot. Did, did you feel that was true? Um, I felt like doing? it was a true effort, right? Like I feel like um, organizations like that are, still have a lot to learn and that's just an ongoing continuing process, right? Yes. Like, yeah, like it's based, like everybody's learning and like including the person that invited us because he was, he grew up in the foster system. So he had a real, or he didn't really get much um, exposure to his culture, right? Right. Yeah, so like he's learning too and it's, um, it's kind of, I guess you could compare it to that with, um, yeah, with what's going on. But yeah, it was interesting. And we had a few interviews. Um, we yeah, a World Spectator, they did an excellent job. Yeah. That's Ada, Ada, Ada Musiman, right? Yeah, yeah Musiman. Musiman. That was the first one. And she came in on the walk with us too. Oh, the she second did. One. Yeah. yeah. It was like really windy as well. And she, she had this... Uh, Really this thin windbreaker on, and she yeah. looked pretty cold. But yep, she's. I'm happy she came out. Yeah, she did at least a mile oh with us, and right. then um, CBC came out and um, Brandon and done a walk with us as well, and done an interview with us. Um, they actually um, got in contact with us when we were at the Shiloh military base. Okay. There. So yeah. that was interesting. Yeah, that was that was good. It was it was really interesting, and we got to be involved in some um, memorials as well which was really like you know that's what we're here for is to right be there to support the families as well right and help right. spread awareness and it was pretty powerful they all placed their at the end of at the end of the ceremony and um, the drumming and all that they all came up to our truck and placed their painted hands on our truck so our, our truck got an upgrade Paint job looks better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was watching it. What's the what's the Facebook that they can go to? And I'll I'll it, put a link in. It okay, is M -M -M -I -P, um, M -M -I -P awareness walk, and it's uh, semi colon steps to bring Canada together. Okay, and that's the Facebook page, and that was actually created by our friend at the military base there. Well. Yeah, just because I'm not really tech savvy at all, and yeah, we're yeah. we're we're more worried about like walking, and we're at, we got to Winnipeg the, yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, I mean, yesterday. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. So, are you in Winnipeg right now? <clears throat> um, no, no, we actually got invited to come to the Arrowhead Games. <laughs> so oh wow! The, I yeah. didn't know that. So, yeah. so what happens there? Um, they were playing hockey. It's just some, um, yeah, they're big they, hockey tournament. I think yeah. there's like multiple sports. Yeah, that... multiple sports going on. Okay. And um, we just got invited out by the chief of um, Long Plain. And yeah, we're honored to be here. And um, they set us up in the boardroom in the, the arena here so we could uh, come and chat with you. And Well, you know. I appreciate it. And your internet is better than Professor Ann Lee's, I noticed so ah. <laughs> you know it's a tech yeah. upgrade and 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 as far as being technical you know old people use facebook okay eh? charity hey. so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so so basically oh, the concept because, because i didn't think we, we we got to the concept is you're walking across canada yes. uh to to bring awareness to the to the indi indigenous people who have been murdered or lost or gone yes mm -hmm. right and the reason why it hits home for us is because we grew up along the highway of tears. Um, we've lost multiple family members, um, both women and men um, and boys and girls that we and lots of them we grew up with and went to high school with and stuff like that. And hmm. the one that really affected me the most was obviously the father of my son. Right. And yeah, and it's um, the other thing that we've been learning on the walk to is like, all these things that my son has gone through, we keep hearing the same story and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, so, like just. So, so, okay. So you grew up in Northern BC and now you're, you're going across province and are you saying the story seems similar? Yeah. Like yeah. it's like, it's the same story that we keep hearing from every family member where it's just like, like and the hard part is like afterwards like though like the thing that always gets them is like 
they'll be doing something and they'll see somebody similar or they look like their family member from far away and I know like that right. that was really tough on my son like he would father's day he'd think it was his dad walking to the words of school and when the 10 for, yeah, 100. yeah and then, yeah. then I would and get a phone that's call. tough man yeah so so I think now are we getting the sense okay this is not just the northern BC or and it, it, this could be a national issue What's it is a national, yes. it's most and, uh, definitely a national issue. The statistics are there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah, and um, some of the stories that they come back to is like always falling on the person, the family member is always doing the work. There's like no outside like help from. It's minimal outside yeah. help, like minimal. Everything's been minimal for what's mm. provided to the family. And it's just like, it's the families are the ones that are worried about how they're going to get money to do these searches. Like I seen a post the other day and I shared it. And it's, um, she's trying to sell or do a 50 50 draw on Facebook. So that way she can get enough money to go and do a search. Um, Cause she heard there was a sighting here and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Right. Like it's, yeah um we did there has been like um some some new new developments as far as like the government giving the funds for the mmiw the, the aftercare stuff um and yeah like 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 i've been saying in all of our um articles there is like we're definitely not the people that sit at these big tables we are not we're the people that sit at the big tables and make these decisions like as far as mm -hmm. like the inquiry and stuff like that we are the people that are living the living the reality right and yeah so it's nice to see these positive changes today we were at the legislative like yeah manitoba yeah. legislative building in winnipeg there right. um for the fourth annual our fourth anniversary um since they released the final report on the mm MMWG2S um, inquiry, right? So there right. was some tons of matriarchs there, and just listening to them speak was it was absolutely humbling. Like it's like powerful, eh? Yeah, it yes, was very, very powerful. powerful. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Um, do you get um, do you get advice from some of these matriarchs and and stuff? Um, we didn't do they come really up and. I, uh, we do get advice from some of them, but, um, we didn't really have a chance to talk. Like we were all standing outside for like two hours and in, right. in the heat and, um, I, everybody dispersed pretty quick and yeah, um, did have a brief interview with APTN. Um, I felt like I had a little bit too heat, but too much heat by then. Like, uh, I think I saw the after effects, but yeah, it's what? it's exposure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. So are, are you finding you are getting some media? attention i yes. i know you've, you yes. you said do you have some some coming up too we're not um, yet you're still we yeah. have something coming up here on monday so i'm excited yeah. about that yeah on monday we have something back home that's what i i uh i got a hold of the uh prince george citizen yeah oh we have two on monday now because more yeah. the merrier yeah. Oh yes, because uh, the yeah, chief we're, here. We're not. That's not unconfirmed yet, so we're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Monday, the Prince George citizen. So something from back home. So that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted to do is get them to know that what we're doing and when we are going to end it and where we're going to end it. So, right. And we've been getting. Oh, we got to tell them about what your family has been doing for support. It's oh, insane. Yes. Tell yeah. us. Tell us. Yeah, uh, my people, family... people want to know, buddy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> my family, I think it started off with my uncle Ron. He uh, sent me a text message and a picture. He's like, he's like, like a selfie. And he's like, I'm out here walking for you guys. I'm walking with you guys. Oh, and then I just snowballed. And now my auntie's out, my sister's out, my nephew, he just got back from Jamaica. Right. He was there for like two, two months, over two months uh, for work. And he got back and he, the first night back or the first day off, he did like 20 kilometers and, yeah. and the next day he done, done another 20 and, and they're like, I don't know how you guys do this on a daily and my, right. my feet are starting to blister up and like, just, uh, 
duct tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I'm hoping. I hope it. I'm hoping it starts something, and uh, we're trying to get people to send in videos uh, saying "I walk for," and you enter in the name, obviously, of the person that is murdered or missing. So. We just want to put like a face behind it, right? Like so that way people can see how, like how much of a national issue this is. Oh yeah, like, how, yeah. yeah how like so they can impact. and 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 international too. Yeah, in some respects as well. But yes, that's true. You know, but you're you're cr coming through. Well, why don't you uh, you know walk through Canada and then on your way back walk through the northern states. And then you got them all covered. I showed, no, I showed her a map of that. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be an easier route. So <laughs> yeah, um, I, was, I really want to like what we we're talking about, the highway a tears that solidified yes. for sure now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're, got, you're, you're, you're going to come back and walk. Yeah. We're going to drive back and to Prince Rupert and then walk home. Right. And that will be our way we get home. Mm -hmm. and, that is uh, tremendous. Yeah. And we've also had like a lot of our family get a hold of us from there and, you know, um, a lot of friends and stuff. And they're like, yep, we're going to join you once you get to BC. We'll join mm -hmm. you in this town or the city is where we're going to join you. Or my mom's coming over too after she's done her, um, her, her school year. She's a EC teacher. Okay. Oh, early childhood educator, I should say. Um, yeah. So after she's done that, she's going to drive over and join us too. I'm thinking we're going to be pretty close to, to the finish line by then, but it's going to be great to have mom there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd imagine. And you, you had said your, your, your son might be coming out to after he I'm, finishes his semester. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping in, in BC. We just keep putting that out there and hoping he catches it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lot, lots of prayers. <laughs> right. So so how, how are you doing for like goods and services and stuff? Um, do you guys all need the, anything? or All the communities have been absolutely amazing. Like I can't even like, I can't even express like, like little little tiny gift bags like yeah tons of donations and, have yeah. been coming in um some of the other things that we've been working on more recently is we've been working on getting some um, administrative support um we've just like we mentioned it when we were in brandon and one of the women there that works with one of the nonprofit or organizations she's like i can do that and i'm like really like mm -hmm. you can do that and she's like yeah so um we're hoping to get a template um <laughs> My cousin Patricia, who's back in um, Prince George, she's mm -hmm. uh, she's the one that's been helping us with the posters and that kind of stuff and the tracking of everything. Um, but between the three of us, I'm pretty sure we could get a template out so that way that we could hopefully give something to these nonprofit organizations that they could just send out on right. our behalf to get them some direct donations, right? Like, because mm -hmm. these are all the organizations that work on prevention. So they help with the uh, vulnerable populations, um, indigenous, both indigenous and non-indigenous. And they help mm -hmm. with um, things like uh, awareness campaigns and the aftercare, like the aftercare is huge for people that, mm -hmm our families, like for people that come back from being in a situation where they're missing is huge, right? Because you're traumatized. And then not only that, like the families, if they don't get any help, like that's huge too, because they need, they need help with fuel and stuff just to go on their searches. One of the families that we met in um, Sitsika Nation, um, he, he mentioned that they go back to Kelowna every year and they like, they do this on their own they go back there every year to do a ground search for their, their missing brother. And his brother was, uh, <coughs> excuse me, he was um, an elderly man and he went missing when he went back there to, or went there to visit. Yeah. And it's just like, they're, this is stuff that they're doing out of pocket. So like the aftercare is huge. Right. And mm -hmm. I don't think nobody ever realizes that, or even what's going on in Manitoba right now, like it was, or in Winnipeg, like it's, it was really heavy when we we're coming into this province, just, knowing what we were like you could just like you know you could feel yeah, that you could yeah. feel what's you could feel that kind of the energy of like this like people are hurting and it's because their people are getting thrown into dumpsters and then dropped into landfills and that's not okay it's just a lot of things that are just happening and it's just 
yeah like the aftercare is huge <laughs> I, I agree, especially like you said, after the trauma, uh, losing somebody, and then uh, mm -hmm. especially if there's children involved, right? Mm -hmm. And so I got a question for you. It's kind of off, off, a little bit off, off topic. Would um, so the, the the little bit I know of indigenous language is is from my region, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go. And I, and I hope this doesn't, you know, when you go from uh, province to province and meet different nations, is, is the language different? Like, there's not a common language, is there? No. You know, um, you know it's like, like, what do I know? Nahe, Astum, or yeah. Pokem, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, know, I know what those ones are, actually. But <laughs> there's not a common language, and it's just from exposure that you learn it. And um, a lot of them, like... Um, I'll understand just from having friends. It's just literally from exposure, like, um, you know, or else because they're kind of similar dialects, like you could kind of figure it out when they're saying, or when they're typing it on um, online, if they're saying like, um, thank you, or I love you. Like I, I could kind of figure that out, but not all the time. And mm -hmm. when right. you, yeah, like you noticed that too, that one day you're like, I don't, or he's, she said, and then he looked at me, I'm like, I'm, that means thank you. Like, and I can't even remember how I knew that meant thank you. But like, it's just, yeah. Right, instinctive. Kinda, you kind of get a feel yeah. for that. Right, because when I was up at Mount Milligan, we had a lady come in uh, from, from Kelowna. And um, um, she's a singer. And uh, it was during um, healing days or something. I, I mean, all these companies put it on. But the way she sang and she was singing to the ancestors um you could if you couldn't understand the words you 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 got the feeling of yeah. it. Do, you, do you know what i mean so mm -hmm. um so when you talk to to other 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 people um the story is similar uh there's no there's no trouble communicating the pain and the hurt right no, people, and I think you, you can feel it, right? So. Yeah, like you can feel it. And sometimes it actually like, yeah, and sometimes like when we call done the call out for videos of people to share their story, mm -hmm. um, like I've been finally, like it's taken me this long to be able to talk about like my story, right? Or like how it has affected me and my son. And mm -hmm. when we did the call out, I'm like, I felt like, you know, I could like this is I thought I could handle it and then when you hear the stories it brings back quite a bit of trauma and it's um and it's not an easy thing to talk about so it's something that you know you just like you really appreciate when they share it because it's mm -hmm. it's pretty profound like the range of emotions that you could feel like just from having that interaction and it's like if you're feeling that can you imagine how they're feeling while they're talking oh. to you? it totally, totally. Yeah. yeah yeah no that's true so what's um so what what's your what's your next steps i like that what are your next steps here <laughs> in front of each other <laughs> one in front of the other um, yeah so um yeah like i'm just kind of stuff to do on monday for media and then after that i think we'll that feels like we're gonna hold off too long though but i think we're no like uh, I was yeah. mentioning uh, because uh, the chief here wants to do something on Monday. Mm -hmm. So it's Friday right now. So we got the whole weekend. I'm saying we go out, maybe do a half day and like come back. Mm -hmm. That way, that way we're, we're not like just sitting in one spot for the whole weekend, like anxious to go out. We'll go out and do, yeah. do what we have to do, but just still come the Come muscles back. the muscles can't handle yeah. when you sit too long if they're just absolute. like after our uh last I'd imagine. Podcast, <laughs> yeah. yeah we had to wait an extra day right <clears throat> so when we started on the road at, in regina mm -hmm. oh that was a hard day it was a really rough <laughs> really day because you're like it's yeah. like they're all seized right up after that <laughs> so are, are you keeping uh calories on or are you are you losing a little weight or are you getting leaner what's What's the scoop uh, there, Cameron? I, I, sure. think, I, I think I've uh, lost some some weight here. Yeah. So. Oh, oh, okay. Well, there's a lot of us old guys who should join you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if you more videos. Yeah, send you yeah. videos. It's been like, I walk, or just go out for a walk and say, I walk with, 
with with you guys is spirit <laughs> okay no how do i the chat you want to yeah, see the chat i, I want to see I, I see chats and i don't know how to keep up yeah no that's why i keep turning my head so i can read it i have it on another screen i'm not i'm not trying to be a jerk um yeah yeah, yeah we're just gonna look at some of the chat here. well it's like kelly says similar strategies were used during the walk across the u.s and protest of the xl pipeline um oh. that, that sort of thing oh uh, the key, keystone yeah the keystone yeah. xl um so did you uh you guys talk about water issues while you're in winnipeg water issues yeah north of, north of winnipeg oh, there's some okay. reserves without clean yeah. water clean water um no we, that, haven't. no we haven't we've been oh, okay. just you know and, um, well good i'm glad we fixed that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know um that that hasn't come up because we have been just focusing primarily on the mmip and because of a lot of the anniversaries that are coming up and what's 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 going on they're really focusing on the women right because that's right especially with the landfill and oh, for sure for sure yeah like there's just any, like, any movement on that story are they going to go um, in they, and, and yeah, search for her no they have a couple of camps that are trying to like protest like oh, well trying to uh engage in them following they're through hoping and, they close the landfill until it gets sorted but i can't really speak to it because we yeah. haven't really spoke to anybody and spe specifically at that camp that no okay like you know like i i don't want to misspeak on that because it's a right. pretty it's a pretty horrific thing that right they're I, dealing I, with right and, yeah I, I don't know if lidar if they could use that or if the metal pieces would you know how the radar underground underground if they could use that at all um i don't they they should do it go in there yeah be yeah, done we, with it i go yeah go. well you would i don't know i just like for me personally i'm just like why didn't they close it yet like yeah like yeah. why hasn't it been closed i don't i don't understand right and like that's another thing is like I'm just really realizing how much I don't understand. <laughs> I'm just like mm -hmm. as we walk more, I'm just like, why? Like I just don't understand. And then we've heard some other stories, and like I don't have enough information on them to really speak to them either. But mm -hmm. it's it's some really shady stuff, man. Like super mm -hmm. shady, and it should not be happening. And it's um. Yeah. I, no, I I agree. I'm a little older than you guys, and and I'm still I'm still puzzled by this stuff. Um, how something you know is right, you do, and then you get pushed, back, or they don't do it, or or somebody lines your, well, usually somebody lines your pocket with money. In this case, I don't think it's it's like that. They just have to release the money to go go search for yeah. her in the garden, in in the dump, right? So yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, it's just... Go ahead. Sorry. It's a tough issue. Yeah, it's a tough issue. And it's hard to like, I can't even comprehend like, I can't comprehend how this is a not like how the landfill isn't closed yet. I don't understand that. I just that doesn't right. make sense to me. Like I understand right. the city has waste, but they have more than one landfill. Yes, that's true. I think we had a had a question um, out there. Am I wrong? I did. Um, hi. Oh, thank you. Um, hi. How are you? Well, I'm quite well. I, this is honestly more of a question. Sorry, Walter, um, to our guest, Miigwech. Um, I'm from Ontario. Um, and my only really question was to advance myself as an ally to like be like kind of more of like your accomplice, even if you don't have, because this was already suggested by Walter, like a direct like deposit name to the peoples who need help. I can really only do that in Ontario other than like I'm a teacher I, like care about it how can I help you um like in what ways can I give you my funds in order to like progress what you guys are doing to either you as individuals which I also respect what you're doing and also the people and the groups that you're encountering or meeting oh, um the groups that we encounter are all non for our non-profit organizations and a lot of them go through other charities so ask auntie's been a huge help and that was in brandon and so that one was through the john howard society the blue door project i think it was and you have to specify ask auntie um, sorry sorry, not, sorry the blue the blue what i think it's blue door or yeah, john the, howard door society. and ask and auntie you, yeah ask auntie as long as you put those okay. two they'll understand 
And then the other one that we ran into so far was um, there is a place if you wanted to like go to the BCBC, that's uh, there's the Cheers for Hope Society. They actually help with the aftercare. So they help with um, yeah. help giving funds for people when they're doing their searches. Um, there's another one. Um, they, there's I think they're looking for donations and stuff directly towards Morgan Camp. And Morgan Camp is named after one of the missing women that in the landfill that they're um, they have a camp there and kind of like their peaceful peaceful protests to um to like please like you know there's they're there um but they're looking for i'm pretty sure they're looking for donations um there's like in the prevention too like the prevention like helping people that are in the homeless populations and stuff like that that's huge because what they found but from my understanding what they found with what was going on in Winnipeg here was that they were targeting homeless people. That's what was going on. It's like he was targeting homeless women. And it oh was, my. yeah. Yeah. So that was, and then he was throwing them in a dumpster, and then the dumpsters would get brought to the landfill. And they were, yeah, to Jeez, they were man. yeah. So like they're helping with the prevention is also vital uh, across the board, and every province has this issue, right? Mm -hmm. like the homelessness the vulnerable populations and not at the when we were at the legislative building today one of the matriarchs there that spoke brought up a really good point she's like they're as easily and accessible as drugs are across this country that's how easily and accessible all these resources should be like it's it's actually quite hard to get resources mm -hmm. when to people that are in need Yes. Like they, they don't, they're, they're not as accessible as it is to go and grab drugs, which is not right. Like that is like, what's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> we we got to work on this guys. <laughs> yeah, I agree. What about yourselves though? Cause um, can we help you guys out with fuel and stuff like that? Cause it's, it's costing you guys money too, to do this. Can we um, yeah, do your, sure. last time we we did your gmail i don't know do you want yeah that's that's all we really use is the gmail um yeah. our the mmip um we get gift cards but yeah like like i said we usually just we've been really focused on getting donations to those organizations that really need them because they're helping keep people out of there but um there is a gmail for emts um there's yeah and um yeah that's um if there's only direct deposit then just um yeah just what what would the gmail address be then if somebody wants to help you with fuel mmip awareness walk at gmail.com um you could share the poster if you want on here um did i send that one to you and do you know uh, how or how do i, I send it i would i would appreciate both uh you know by all means yeah. okay um how do i do this Husband. Uh, Hold on, <laughs> you, could, you could send it to me in the chat my dear okay and then i think okay i might be able to log on on my phone maybe. Oh, Is that awesome? no. Hold on, i'll keep talking and i'll get it okay yeah Ask yeah keep question. talking charity <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so. are there are there any more questions uh from the audience sir oh good uh so we have uh Does anybody have any more questions? I mean, such uh, shy guys we have. These guys used to be really talkative, but um, uh, actually, last time you were on, I really engaged in some good discussion about what you're doing, and uh, everybody appreciates that fact. And and I think you caught some people unawares, just like you did, because all of a sudden, boom, you're gone yeah. on your walk, and which is cool, and. Uh, uh, people are just beginning to realize the steps involved. Oh, here we go. There's a... Okay, yeah, if we want... Okay. Hello again. Just... Um, this, I guess, is more... I didn't want to ask this because it's, once again, that, that trauma that I'll never be able to reimburse you with. Um, mm -hmm. When, what was it, about like five years ago, the wet suet in... Um, which is a, repre a representation, you can honestly explain this better than I can, um, a representation of many different tribes or groups of people who are on the West Coast. In what ways can you describe the, perhaps this would be more um, 
aware in people's minds, the West Sudan protests against a pipeline. How does that tie into the fact that there are missing and murdered indigenous women, girls, men, boys, and two-spirit people? What is the connection there? Um, one thing that they've um, noticed and that I've like, I've had a lot of my other friends speak on, um, I'm not like, I haven't really like been an activist like this before. Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't even know I was an activist until somebody sent me an email and being, introducing me as an activist. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that's what it was. <laughs> but, um, we just walking. <laughs> but anyways, um, the one thing that they found a direct correlation with is the work camps and the amount of women that are going missing. So that's like, you know, when these big work camps come in, it brings in a lot of different characters and that they found direct correlations with that kind of stuff. So um, one thing that, again, another traumatic thing that uh, I learned at that time was that uh, is for, in particular, like the Albertan police will take, will pick up like homeless people or those whom they might assume to be like sex workers and take them on like, there's a word for it, like, like starlight. starlight, tour. starlight yeah. Tour. Say that again. Sorry. Starlight tour. So ask it to. Yeah. So, so you could obviously explain this better than I can, but maybe the <laughs> attraction under capitalism, like settler colonial capitalism, if, invites workers to a location, like, like miners or people who extract resources, and that creates kind of like a, a mining town where there is easy access to people who already are disenfranchised. So be it homeless mm-hmm. people and more obviously in Canada, it's indigenous women, it's indigenous mm-hmm. um, LGBTQIA2S people. So mm-hmm. I think that if you'd like to expand on my like very uh, disjointed thought that perhaps it's due to these work camps that attracts not only people who are looking for work like sex workers, but um, people who are victims of the police trying to enforce their colonial rule over this area, which is now a work camp. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I could really expand on that too much, to be honest. Um, all I know is like, even as I was just talking to a lady about this, um, like this is, um, we had a really different experience with one of the police officers in Saskatchewan. And I know like you heard about the Starlet tours in Alberta specifically. I've heard about them in Saskatchewan my whole life. Right. Cause I, this is my first time to the prairies to be honest. And um, the Starlet tours don't happen. Well, I don't, I have never, ha- haven't heard of them happening in BC. Right. From what I know. So I'm not really too familiar with it. And like I said, I'm learning a lot as I go. Um, I definitely believe that there's a strong tie with work camps and with that kind of, with those kind of instances happening. Um, But it's, I can't really answer that question because I don't know enough about it. um, Except for like when we're walking, like I even, we stopped in at one of the gas stations and one of the guys even mentioned that, yeah, they, 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 we, we didn't think we're going to get out alive that time. And I'm like, holy crap, like these guys are young guys. Right. Um, yeah, like it's, I definitely know there's a link between that, those type of work camps coming in, those kind of personalities coming in, um, the link with the RCMP there. Um, it's hard to say, because like, I know, as I was moving over, like my family was getting worried because they were getting worried about, um, they heard the RCMP were worse in this spot, they were worse in this spot. And like, we haven't seen that yet personally. And I don't know if it's just because we are in the public eye or I don't know if it's going to get worse. Like I can only speak to my experience and I really wish I had more, more of a better answer for you. I'm sorry. No, no, thank you. Thank you so much. I really did um, express my question as something to invite the rest of the audience who are maybe not Canadian, who maybe don't know that particular phrase to talk about it. So thank you so much for talking about it. Thank you. And the U.S. Border Patrol has also been known to do that, too, as well. Um, What you're talking about, too, was a big court case um, in Saskatoon, I believe. And uh, they drove a guy out, and it was minus 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they did that regular, and then they would, I think, bet on if he'll make it back. I mean, it's just just egregious, is is what it is, especially in, in the cold in Canada, right? So... So what's what's your next town? 
What, where you guys? Uh, Thunder uh, Bay. Say it's Thunder <laughs> Bay. Where's it? There? <laughs> I, I, I hope we could do it in the day, but I don't. I think Thunder Bay is pretty far. <laughs> oh, okay. I think Thunder Bay might be once we start walking, maybe five days to Thunder Bay. I can't. Right. Let's, I, I don't know the distance right from. Now. So yeah. So what? What's what's your route? Uh, you're on Highway One or sixteen? Yeah, we're yep. still on Highway One. Still Highway oh, okay. One. We stick to Highway One. Or, or as my I friend would say, uh, Thunder Charity, Bay. Uh, I don't know if Charity uh, talked about the officer on how kind he was. Did yeah, you? we oh. have the most um, in Saskatchewan. The like, most insane, insane experience with the police officer. Like I've never had an experience with the police officer. Charity, like tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so what happened? Uh, I was uh, taking a break, and I was at the window, the passenger side window, and a cop pulls up in front of us our police officer and then she's like oh no I'm like I'll go talk to him so I walked up to the the, the cruiser and he, he came out and he's like really like asking a bunch of questions on and what was, we were doing and I was looking for my license and registration while he's doing this and I'm like am I supposed to start videotaping this this occurrence right now so we, I have like evidence or should I be phoning someone? So I have a witness, like I'm from BC and I'm native and mm-hmm. yeah. And <clears throat> instead he asked if we needed water and we were pretty good on water. So he went to Timmy's and brought us back to Morton's. He brought us and back was like, coffee and a tea. Awesome. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the, um, the police in Saskatchewan are different. <laughs> but, and then that's, that was like, I was really nervous about that one too, because that's where I heard all these star- starlight tours are happening. At, and I do not doubt that they, they're, they're happening. Like, obviously like it wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be a court case if these things aren't happening, right. but it was a, it was a good, it was a good reminder that not everybody's terrible. Right. Like, mm-hmm. it's just like, it's, yeah. So that was comforting but that was it was like I was scared like I was really really scared to be honest like I I was actually really scared <laughs> oh, like, I, I was like oh okay I'll I'll go talk to him <laughs> yeah I, I I would imagine um hmm. so okay so uh we didn't we so w- where is the next place you're going to be that's luck. Like- um, we do have we are keeping up our Facebook page now that we have one created and okay. it's um, We'll the put end. the link in the in the description. Okay, you got that one, right? You're on there. Oh yeah, you betcha. I'm on it every day. All right, perfect. Right. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, MMI. don't you see me liking things? My gosh. Yes, I <laughs> noticed that. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, he's Sa- Sarita, maybe. Sarita. Yeah. Or Sarita. El- Elma. That don't, might be. Don't judge oh, no. me. I will. I'll butcher stuff. Just um. No, that won't be it. This one might be doable. Prada? Prada. Is it Prada? P R A W D A. I don't know. These are all Manitoba names or are they Ontario? Yeah, names? yeah. Yeah, we right. usually we can pretty much do um oh, yeah. 40 kilometers. I'm I'm gonna stay with 40 because I like the 20 and 20. That works good for me. <laughs> so what do you what do you do? Do you do you do you go out and then come back to sleep or do you sleep in the truck or do you camp or it all how, how's this working? It all depends. Um, since the ticks came and we have Gretchen yes. with us, of course, we have Gretchen and the ticks are insane this year. Apparently, like I thought it was just always bad, but I guess the, they're, I guess they're, they're really bad this I year. guess they're really bad. So I just, was, right. yeah. And Gretchen is uh, shivering on the floor here. But she's used to being in a hot truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here, let's, let's show everyone. Gretchen. Yeah, you guys got to meet Gretchen. Yeah, let's meet Gretchen. <laughs> She's part of the team. Oh, she's yeah. how, how old? She is five. Six. Or six. six. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. yeah, she's just shivering down there. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, because we had to pull a couple off of her. Really? And she had she had a sponsor as well too on the way, Musa, and a lady gave her a couple hundred dollars so she could get her tick medicine and all this stuff. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, so that was actually quite. Right. that was amazing i thought that was yeah she needs a uh, special dog food because her stomach will will turn if she doesn't have the right dog food so they're pre- it's pretty expensive and, yes uh, yeah she was asked 
I went to go uh, bathroom in, in the uh, laundry mat. They had a, a dog wash there. And uh, the, the lady was talking to my wife here and uh, asking her a bunch of questions. And when I came back in, or when I got uh, finished bathing her, she like went out and grabbed some uh, funds for Gretchen here. Yeah, they were specifically for Gretchen. So that was kind of cool. But um, yeah, because we have Gretchen here and the ticks and all that stuff that I'm not really used to. We've, um, we're opting for the truck. We figured out mm -hmm. how to make a bed in the truck, which works mm -hmm. great, actually. It's okay. a good thing neither of us are super tall. And um, we've been um, getting the cheap hotels more. So mm -hmm. that's been nice too, because then we get a shower every night. Um, she has a bunch of stuff stuck to her already. Yeah. Are you pulling ticks off her? No, we're pulling. She's been rolling around um because the trees they're like, right. um, you know like well, the a... the buds on the trees the sticky yes. part. Yeah, yeah, she has those all over her. No, with, we're not with the it. sap. She just lays there. Right? Actually, that, that, that is, is a, a tick. tick. Yeah. Oh damn, oh. is right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah but she she did get her tick medicine, so she'll be good. But yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> okay so well is that. there what's what's the chances of us uh touching base again in in a week or so or two? uh well i think we'll yeah work. yeah that sounds good uh, because... our reoccurrence is uh definitely so we'll stick to the half hour yeah is that what... yeah and the yeah, end of the I, hour I, even even I really even want to go watch the hockey game <laughs> oh no you don't no. <laughs> no don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, do you do you want to leave us with anything, or we'll just say um, uh, we'll see you see you next well, time. We, Good luck to you guys. Page. If there's any questions, I'd open yeah, it would be nice if there was uh, any questions. Um, I don't know, a whole bunch of thank yous uh, in the chat, so I, I guess there are no questions, which is yeah. uh, surprising from this crowd. I'll tell you that. And if but, any disparage. media people, what's the disparage question? I'm Maybe. not disparaging any questions. Uh, oh. Right. Um, oh, she yeah. says dog ticks don't give Lyme disease. So, okay, is, that's great. Uh, that's good. I mean, I'm an outdoor educator. Uh, dog awesome. ticks are, there's like a word for it. I don't remember, but like the ones that go after dogs don't give Lyme disease. Um, nice. That's a lot to say. And Walter, I was just saying that. You keep saying that we have no questions, but I did ask some. It oh, yeah. Really no, any, uh, any but more if anyone questions? else. Anyone else would like to like any ask any questions? Like we do have like yeah. on, boots on the ground people who are here helping like any kind of movement they could. Right. And don't forget another way to support. Thank you, Ari. <laughs> Go ahead, Cherry. Sorry. Oh, I said, and don't forget, guys. Another way you guys could support is just share our posts. Um, give us encouragement if you see news articles that we should probably be aware of. Please share it to our page. We should read them. <laughs> What's your page again? It's um, MMIP Awareness Walk, and it's some um, semicolon uh, steps to bring Canada together. Yeah, yeah. Um, who, who, you, who, who you that's rooting? That's on Facebook. For? On Facebook, who are you rooting for for the hockey game? Um, we probably the home team up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just out there to watch some good hockey. It's all it's all local First Nations coming to play, and that sounds amazing. It's been a long time since my my son's dad was a hockey player. Okay. So, so I, yeah. I just want to want to show Americans that even uh, um, uh, women from from Canada like hockey. So. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You guys take care and look after your feet and, and we'll talk real soon. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks thank for, you. thanks for taking time out of your day you to watched. talk to thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Masito. Yeah. <laughs> Masito. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Oh, just so you know, Masito means thank you very much. <laughs> just, <laughs> I didn't say Masito. In what language is that, Charity? <laughs> Um, that's carrier. Carrier, and yeah. can you say it again? Masicho. 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 Thank you. And, and then when you want to say I love you, say Ngesi. Ngesi. Or we say Ngesi. We say Tebi Ngesi. Our goodbye is Wetsa. Wetsa. Masicho Wetsa.
Thanks. Thank you so much, Charity. You're welcome.